Are you ready to get into Abaddon's Gate, book three in the Expanse trilogy? No, it's not a trilogy. Crap. Um, it's nine books. It's about to be nine books. So it's a trilogy of trilogies. No, not really. I'm going to break it down. What is a gate? What is it a gate for? Is it a gate or is it just metaphorical? Part of the title is metaphorical, per usual. So let's get into that review and discussion. So per usual, I'm going to do a little bit of a non-spoilery bl spoilery blurb at the beginning, and then I'm going to do a spoiler section in the latter part of the program tonight. I say program, but I am well aware that I'm not speaking into a TV camera. But, you know, vernacular, it happens. What did I like about this book? That's an excellent question. I liked a lot. It, this book really changed the nature of this series essentially. Let's just say at the beginning of the book, something happens with the protomolecule on Venus. It's been brewing for a long time and finally the alcohol is ready. It's not actually alcohol because it's a gate. The title in this of course is metaphorical because Abaddon actually addresses people's perception of the gate, which is a really cool thing. I think this is the first one that I actually picked up on that. I'm not entirely sure who Caliban was, and then Leviathan, I kind of picked up that kind of referred to the protomolecule because Leviathan is an extinct creature that's referenced in the Bible. But I, I will have to look up to see who Caliban is. If you know who Caliban is, let me know and I can figure out what the, and tell me what the metaphor was for Caliban's war. But this definitely refers to people's perception of the gate. And that's something that's addressed heavily in this book. One of our point of view, our new point of view character is the Reverend Anna something. She's referred to as Anna Reverend or Red by Amos, but she's really cool. She is a Russian Reverend. Presbyterian, I think it was. She definitely wasn't Catholic because the Catholic dude was weird. Catholic dude was, eh. Sorry, Catholics. What happens is gate happens. And so guess what? A bun one of the governments, the Mar I think it was, yeah, the Earth government, gets together a group of non-scientists, essentially. You have people that represent a wide variety of religions and brings them to the gate. And, and you know, chaos ensues, things happen. But one of the primary issues that they're there to address essentially is how to fit this into the mind of the people. And I'll talk more about this in the spoiler section about how they addressed it. So Reverend Anna was our new point of view character. We still got Holden. And then we also get another viewpoint. Oh, I can't even remember his name. It's not Bob. It starts with a B. I'm pretty sure it starts with a B. But he was a security. He was the he he's the head of security on the Behemoth, which was formerly known as the N N Navu, the Mormon world ship that they were trying to shoot off into space into eternity, and so the Mormons can go where they can live in peace. Yeah, the OPA commandeered that, and that's now their battle cruiser. Even though, does it work as a battle cruiser? This secure head of security is an Earther working for the OPA, much like Fred Johnson is, even though Fred's kind of running it. But he used to be in Fred Johnson's chain of command, and Fred Johnson recruited him after he had bad, bad time. So there's a lot of political maneuvering in this book made by people that are not the POV characters. So there's like a lot of essentially NPC <laughs> political maneuvering by the OPA. Mars isn't addressed that much. Our main POVs are from Holden, um, Reverend Anna on Earth ships, and then on our security guard, for, our security head dude, which is basically you have the captain, the executive officer, and then the head of security, essentially, is the command structure. So he's the third most powerful person on the OPA's giant warship that they have. So they're all clustered around this gate, and that's when the plot happens. But they're trying to figure out what the gate is, what it does, what its purpose is, who, who, who. And essentially, who made it? I really like the philosophical things that they addressed in this. And this is actually a question like, okay, if aliens exist, how does that fit into, you know, the Bible? Because the Bible is obviously very human and Earth-centric. That's something that I've thought of before because it's just such an interesting question. Like, how would, how would Christianity, or any other religion for that matter, adapt to this new revelation? And I actually thought about trying to start a blog or something that kind of is like Christianity for the aliens or something like that. I have debate. It's one of those many ideas that I've had and then just done nothing about. This almost, this 
booktube was almost one of those but thank goodness it didn't because now i don't have to stare at the wall and talk about books i can stare at a camera and talk about books out of the three i think caliban's war is probably my favorite but this is a close second i love the philosophical questions it poses so if you like more philosophical questions this will be good for you there's a little bit more unrest with the opa so the political side of things we mostly see the opa side of things holden is honestly still kind of self-righteous he believes he's being i won't say anything more i still enjoy his and naomi's relationship i wish we saw more of the other two crew members i wish they were more of a focused um amos and alex it's really hard when two main characters have names main characters have names that start with the same letter so definitely pick this up if you were disappointed in the last two because the plots were kind of similar this is not this is this is a completely different plot it goes full turn away from that with new questions new steps for mankind that's taken and of course new revelations into how this world is built and hi there's aliens what does this mean and what does this gate do more theoretical physics <laughs> Let's talk about the philosophical question. I feel like they didn't fully address it. Like Anna keeps bringing it up, like what does this mean for Christianity? And she kind of, she, she put, she keeps bringing it up in relation, especially to the Catholic archbishop that was along. Sorry for the portrayal of Catholicism, space Catholicism, but, and it's just such a fascinating question that I hope is addressed in future books, but I don't think it will be. Because Anna, I mean, it's not gonna be brought up by Anna because Anna went back to earth to be with her family. She's not coming back. She ain't going back to the gate. She wants to live out her life in Russia. Russia. That archbishop, though, he was... I didn't like him. He made me squirm for the first words he said. Every word he said was political in the sense that it was carefully planned and worded in such a way to seem right, but made me uncomfortable all the same because it sounded rehearsed, even though there was no sound at all. Some of you can probably put this better. There's a certain way that political PR statements sound and the certain way they are worded to be, you know, politically correct, of course. Always just whenever I hear it, almost puts me on edge, if anything. And that was my thought process with the Archbishop. Because he was obviously looking after his own ends. Because he's he was a political figure, not a religious figure. Which is also an interesting thing because he's a streamer that's an Archbishop. <laughs> That was really, I really liked that um, aspect. It wasn't like cringy streams like Twitch or whatever. The thought of an archbishop doing that just kind of made me laugh. Clarissa, Melba, that was an interesting ride to go through from Holden. I hate Holden to I will follow what Holden says to wherever she went off to. hi yi yi I liked Anna for going after her and be like, hi, you can be saved which was a very accurate portrayal of what Christianity should be like. I mean, I feel like there aren't that many of them. I felt like he actually kind of understood a at least a little bit about the core crux of Christianity. It's like, no matter who, they can still be saved. They can still be redeemed. They can still be better, which was really, really nice to see in a book because very few books actually portray Christianity well. In essence, there's a kind of a yin-yang two sides of the church between the archbishop and anna which is really nice and this is where the metaphor comes in because they're like oh my gosh this is the devil at least their archbishop was this is evil we must sacrifice ourselves to the funny thing was the archbishop bishop was closer to the truth than he thought like it's not that the the just because it's alien it's evil it's the fact that there could be a world destroying race on the other side of one of these portals, gates. I, I thought the contrast between Anna and the Archbishop was great. Holden, oh my gosh, get off your high horse. Yes, you have plot armor. Yes, you are aware of it. Like his whole spiel, his whole thought process right before he went to the gate, right before he went into the gate of, maybe I'm meant to be here. Maybe he's leading me to do, like, like Julie and Miller are leading me to do this. It's like, oh my gosh. He's become fourth wall aware. Destiny is the only way that book characters can be aware of a fourth wall. I do wish we'd seen more of Amos and Alex. 
Like we see a little bit more of them here where they see them. I, I'd like just want a dedicated feel, like a dedicated POV from Amos or Alex. Either one. They're great. We've seen a lot of Holden and a lot of Naomi through Holden's eyes. But Amos and Alex, they're so great. Our security guard. Let's look up the name of that security card since I have the book right here. His name is Bull. That's why I couldn't remember. I kept mixing up with Bobby because they're both bees. Even though Bobby's not even in this book. Bull illustrated the classism slash racism, a little bit, yeah, racism, of just everybody in the OPA and Earth. Because, you know, he's an Earther in a Belter's world. You know, they all didn't like him for it. And if he had been in charge, it would have been a bad thing because they wouldn't have respected his decisions. And thus the captain went off doing crappy decisions, making crappy decisions anyways. I thought the fact that essentially it was the Navu slash behemoth was a walking talking class cannon that was really funny it's like oh yeah you fire missile guess what the entire thing is gonna short circuit also the most tragic part of this book sam died this part really made me i was i had to read this part like three times it's like no sam can't be dead come on no sam's awesome why would you do that i hated that sam died i wish she hadn't oh well Bull turning into a loader bot illustration was also very interesting. I really think that was unrealistic because, you know, your spine's floating around. I'm not a doctor. I really don't know that much about this stuff. But I felt like it was like, oh, he should be dead by now. But he wasn't. So I guess there's some level of creative liberty that they went into, which was fine. I thought he should have died sooner from the wounds, not thematically or plot wise. Finally, this series is going to go some crazy places. I might even, after after the after this, I might even dispense with non-spoiler sections. Because, like, at this point, if you're reading the series, you're going to be caught up. And you're not going to be like, hey, do I want to read the next one? So I may just dispense with non-spoiler sections after this one. Because this is going to go some crazy places. We're finally getting to the stars. Are we actually going to see alien contact and are we going to see Earth completely obliterated? Because that's what will happen. I really hope they figure out how to use this technology. I'm excited to see where the series goes. And also, because of how this changed the dynamic of the series, because we're going to the stars, I'm interested, I'm, I'm I'm not sure, but I wonder if the politics between Earth and Mars and just this, our solar system will become less of a thing as we get farther out into the stars and we kind of we go into a frontier land politics and just ignore Earth and Mars. So the next big jump in technology will basically be in-system jumps trying to get to basically from the Earth or Mars to the gate as quickly as possible. Because it's still going to take, you know, months to get to the gate, no matter where you are in the system. Maybe even a year if you're like all the way out at the other side, like, like at the gates... Was the gate by Uranus? I don't know. But if you're all the way at like Neptune and the gate's on the opposite side of the galaxy from you, it's going to take a good year to get there. It'll be interesting if they can find that tech or if they can just repurpose alien tech. And we, our two big corporate baddies are gone now. Maybe this will turn into a wild, wild west of the space, which will be very interesting. Have a great night. Have a great sleep cycle. Whatever you're doing, have a great rest of it.